Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin this study with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are very grateful um, for this morning, for the opportunity to study. We pray for those who are looking to understand truth and um, those people who have been following these messages, these studies. We just pray, Lord, that uh, your Holy Spirit can continue to work upon our hearts and that we can learn of you. We ask, Lord, that as we look again at judges and we seek to put this on a line, that you can guide and direct us and that we can keep ever before us the reality that we know very little and uh, we are dependent upon you for truth and understanding. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can enlighten our minds, that you can strengthen us and allow us to concentrate on these things. And we pray also, Lord, that the things we find will bring a conviction to our hearts. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Not as many of us here this morning. Maybe people were up late watching the American election. I don't know. Um <clears throat> So what we had done yesterday is we addressed basically where we were going to place Judges 8, verse 1 to 3. We did address Z ben Zalmunna a bit, and we went through uh, Sokoth and Penuel, but we didn't put any of those on a line. We haven't uh, taken those verses and decided what they are, what they mean. Um. <clears throat> Now, whether we're correct or not in this um, is something that, we, you know, we still haven't decided on. But what we did is we took um, Judges 719 and we put that as July 19th as this call. And we have Judges 8-1 as a symbol. Now, we had lined this up with November 9th and September 11th, as you can see on these way marks on this line. Well, you can't see, I can see, yeah, I'll go over here. Um, <clears throat> and we have that lined up with December 6th, 2020. And, and whether that's correct or not, we're not certain, but there seems to be a lot of the symbols there. And um, the verse that I looked at, we, did, we didn't really address it completely, um, was uh, um, in Chronicles, I think it was, well, it's chapter 27, but was it First Chronicles or Second Chronicles? I can't remember. I'll have to look that up. Um, so it's First Chron Second Chronicles chapter. So 27 must have been. No, that's not right. 26. Yes, it's with Uzziah. Um, so I'll look at this here. So this is where he's going to be offering upon. Um, Looking at Young's literal translation. Okay, let's go to King James. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. So we've had this symbol of the 81 priest as representing midnight. What was the reason that we had this representing midnight? What was it that Jeff had uh, looked at? Stephen, you remember why the 81? It was the uh, 1909 General Conference when Elmite was 81 years old. Okay. Was that the main reason? Was that that? I, I seem to remember there was some other reason, but I can't think of what it was. No, 
Now, why would he mark? Yeah, sure. Come on, yeah, why would he mark that as midnight? That the the general conference, the that's the last general conference she attended. Yes. Yeah. So why is that marked midnight? Yeah, I can't remember the logic. Yeah, I, I don't remember it either. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can find this. Okay, so um, so this is from uh, the School of the Prophets. Uh, and so this is September, October. This isn't Jeff, this is Tess. So I'm going to uh, look at that one. Should have looked this up earlier. Um, well, I'm just gonna, I'm going to look at this statement of tests is here. So this is from a presentation that she did. You don't, uh, that was on September 23rd, 2018. So this is going to be before she gives the uh, November 9th prediction. Um, so she's going to say a few interesting things. Maybe we can glean from this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Alexander's generals defeat Antigonus or Antigonus at 81 years of age. So she's talking there about the Battle of Pyrrhus. Uh, 1938 plus 81 years is 2019. Um, I don't see anything here about. I don't see anything here about Ellen White. So I'm going to put this in. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I actually have some notes in my stuff. Sorry about that. Anybody, anybody else have any thoughts on that? that why we have 81 marking midnight? I'm just going to post something on the chat. Okay. I know Tess uses it 1909 when Ellen White was 81 to mark there. So from, so Stephen's posted here in the chat. So I'll tell you what this here is. It's, uh, it's from a sermon Jeff did at Lambert Church okay. on the 7th of January, 2017. Okay. And the sermon was entitled 81. Okay. And that's the prophecy notes that uh, 
Pat Rampi has attached to that sermon. Okay. So from 9-11, there are 40 days plus 10 days, uh, which equals 50, Pentecost at midnight. Um, not sure what that means, the 40 days and the 10 days. Um, Ezekiel 8, there's the four abominations starting in the sixth year, the sixth month, the fifth day, they go to the sixth day, six months and the sixth year at midnight. Gideon's army is reduced from 32,000 at 9-11 to 300 at midnight. The last general conference session that Ellen G. White attended was the 19 of nine when she was 81 years old and it was midnight. Doesn't tell us why it was. Ezekiel 8.1, uh, the increasing apostasy the sea of the four generations of Adventism typifies other events associated with the number 81. Okay, so, so that one's helpful. Um, Ezekiel. And does that make sense? So if I post the link, you can see uh, more of the notes this year. Chat thing only allows so many characters to be added. Okay. Okay. So, so we go to the chat. Open this up. Okay. Well, so I would have the transcript too. So. so let me see what we got here. Okay. So, yeah, so there's more notes here. Obviously, we have the Ezekiel 80. Eight verse one. Um, so in the notes themselves. So, um, so here's what Jeff says. He's going to start right from the beginning. The number eighty-one, which in December of last year, Parminder presented the number eighty-one, is a symbol of midnight. My sympathies for someone such as. Crystal or anyone else in here that's rather new to the taking of the number one would be kind of out there, but you got to do what you got to do if you understand what Parminder was. Uh, then I'm not going to try to defend everything that he's saying. I'm not even going to deal with it. But what I'm going to use as a point of reference to begin this presentation, Parminder was making 1909, the final general conference session that Ellen White attended as midnight. And he did so because she attended there. She was 81 years old, and we have other witnesses that 81 represents midnight. And we know that midnight, one of the numbers, and the reason that I started with Daniel 8.13, if you're wondering in Daniel 8.13, where it says that certain saint, the Hebrew in, is Palmoni, it means the wonderful number, and it speaks to the characteristics of Christ as he conveys truth through the use of numbers or time prophecies or any type of mathematical revelation that, brings, that he brings up there. So in the 1909 general conference session, which was the last sister White attended, he pointed out that in this session, she spoke 11 times. And we know that 11 is one of the numbers that is associated with midnight. And there's other things surrounding this position that, of his that he didn't even refer to that would uphold it. Perhaps next week we'll get to that. Um, okay, so he's gonna deal with lines on the board. It's going to deal with the Pentecost idea. Um, nines that lines up 9-11 with midnight. Um, she shows that the number is associated with the Sunday law as well. Those are the 666. That's what he's dealing with, the abominations. Um, let 
So I don't know if that really helps us completely, but what we can see is that um, we have this number 81 and we're attaching it to here, these four, four, four score priests. That's what I wanted to really find out what he says about these 81 priests. And I don't see that in there. Um, Um, because we know that we have these 81 priests that are going to stand up against Uzziah. So in this, in this symbol, if we're going to have 81 priests here, we're going to put this as midnight. I mean, this would look to me more like the Sunday law, wouldn't it? Rather than midnight. If I was just going to take the symbol. Yeah, as having a mark on his forehead. Yes, the, the leprosy, right? And and also, of course, this is church and state. Correct. Yes. Now, see, I've been making the argument which that um, our line is is the line that is not, not our personal line that we're studying right now, dealing with, with the internal stuff, but the line that Jeff has that goes from 1989 to the Sunday law is a zoom on the way mark of the Sunday law of Ellen White's line. And, and specifically 9-11 typifies the Sunday law, right? So we can have 9-11 typifying the Sunday law. Now, I'm also suggesting that, um, this Judges chapter eight, the line that we're producing from primarily Judges eight, is a zoom into December 25th, 2021, which we have as a symbol of the Sunday law. So it would make sense that you have um, this symbol of the Sunday law at December 6, 2020. And because we remember each of these way marks typify each other, but we're, we're dealing with a line that is specifically um focused in on december 25th right that's that's how we're understanding it so we can line december 6th up with november 9th and september 11th because in a sense these are also the sunday law even though you know primarily we would look at you know the line going 9 11 midnight midnight cry sunday law but we know 9 11 the mighty angel of revelation 18 comes down at 9-11, and Ellen White marks that as the Sunday law, the mighty angel of Revelation 18. And we saw that with A.T. Jones as well um, in 1893 at the general conference session there, he's gonna take Revelation 18, the angel coming down is marking the Sunday law. And we can see that also with Ezekiel 8 verse one, that's the Sunday law, right? I mean, that's what it's going to be addressing that history it's obviously chapter nine that's going to deal with the Sunday law itself, but it's dealing with this apostasy and it's going to begin, of course, on the fifth day of the sixth month of the sixth year and end on the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth year. So you're going to have that 666 symbol there. So how would December 6, 2020 with the declaration, how, how would we parallel that then with um, with this line here in Judges 8. And, and also this here, Uzziah, with the uh, burning incense. So I think the idea there that we had is that they basically are taking upon themselves a role that they should not. That is, they're mixing church and state. In this declaration, they're using, uh, in a sense, you know, they're FFA, so they're, in a sense, they're the church, but they're using civil authority in this case, or the civil authority 
that they have, they're trying to use to decide. Uh, you know what's right and what's wrong, but it, it's it's all more political than opening God's word and studying. <clears throat> and so if that's the case, so if we're, if we're correct, if we're kind of agreed upon that, that we can take this history and line that up with December 6, 2020, we now have to address um, the pursuing of Ziba and Zalmuna and the aid that is being um, refused at Gideon's request. And so we've taken this to be um, uh, a message that is um, Ziba and Zalmuna is our, our messages. And there are groups that are not supporting Gideon in his pursuance, or, you know, he's pursuing them, this, this message. So there's, how, how would we understand this? What, was, what is it that we said yesterday? I mean, we were kind of caught in the middle of it, so we didn't come to any solid conclusions. Now, I had suggested that Sukkoth and Penuel represent uh, differences of opinion that exist primarily in the Canadian group and the American group that makes them differ. So what is it that Gideon is pursuing? What is it that the message of July 18th is, is seeking to accomplish and uh, the movement is not supporting? What have we decided yesterday or had we decided completely? Anybody with thoughts on this? Anybody remember? Okay, what does Ziba mean? I have a meaning uh, sacrifice. Yeah, so sacrifice. It's a twofold enemy. And Zalmuna. Shade has been withdrawn. What's that? Shade has been withdrawn or protection has been withdrawn. Yeah, yeah, so protection is withdrawn. So so why why these messages? Sacrifice and protection is withdrawn. What would what would that represent? We didn't really go into that into too much detail.
because we remember that Ziba and Zalmunna were present at um, Mount Tabor. And this would this would bring us back to the story of of um, Deborah and Barak, right? The battle that occurred there. <clears throat> So how does that help us understand Ziva and Zalmunna? So is this a, a message, a false message that is still connected to the history of Parminder? And if it is, what is it? So Ziba and Zalmunna do what? What do they do at Mount Tabor? Well, there was a suggestion that they were connected to the Catholic Church, that they were... You have uh, like a... With Permenter, you have like the, the papal inquisition taking place. Right, so you have this papal in inquisition. So. Now that we're going to have the word sacrifice and um, uh, protection is withdrawn or removed or however we put it. So, so is this the persecutory spirit that that occurs with the papacy? Is that what Ziva and Zalmuna represent? And is that still existent within the movement in connection with December, the December 25th, 2021 way mark? Right, and, and Judges 8.18, then said he unto Ziba and Zalmunna, what manner of men were they whom ye slew at Tabor? And they answered as thou art, so were they each one resemble the children of a king. So Ziba and Zalmunna would represent this persecutory spirit, this papal spirit. And it would still exist within the movement. So, I mean, we see it there at December 6th, uh, 2020 with the declaration. But my suggestion is that we have this December 25th date where we're also going to see uh, this division that occurs in the movement. Um, and, and basically we're gonna have some events that are going to lead up to that. And so we'd have to figure out what those events are. So uh, the support being withdrawn or not offered or not allowed in this pursuing of Ziba and Zalmuna, so that is the July 18, 2020 message, is a message that should be a united message. But it's not, right? And the men of Sukkoth and the men of Penuel uh, are not supporting this message, especially when it comes to um, this, this sort of division that occurs, right? This sort of uh, controversy that occurs. So it's not supporting um, the understanding of chronology completely, right? And, and I would say that um, Sukkoth and Penuel uh, have two different symbols that, uh, that would distinguish what, what, the way that I understand it is the American group and the Canadian group, the messages of those groups. And 
Now, what about Sukkoth itself as a symbol? Where is Sukkoth? So I know we're jumping around here a little bit, but we're, we're talking about these symbols. So where is Sukkoth? Where is this place? Yeah, was that um, one of the cities of refuge? Okay, it's one of the cities of refuge. And uh, I'm just going to look here where we, we have it mentioned in the Bible. So it's going to be mentioned quite a few times, obviously. Got to wait for my computer. So the first time it's mentioned is Genesis 33, 17. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkoth and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkoth. And we also know the Feast of Sukkoth, the Feast of Booths, or the Feast of Tabernacles, uses that same name. And, and so normally you would think of Sukkoth, isn't that shelter? Yes. Right. So, so the July 18th, 2020 message in pursuing Zeba and Zalmunna go to Sukkoth, who should provide them, in this case, bread, but Sukkoth also represents shelter or protection, right? And so, so we're going to see that, that Sukkoth has this symbol in it, and yet it's not going to provide any relief for Gideon and his men. Not, and, and definitely they're not going to provide bread. Now, uh, we have other places where they're going to travel from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot. That's Exodus 1237. And, um, and then they're going to go from Sukkoth to Etham in the edge of the wilderness. So when they first flee from Egypt, they're going to go to Sukkoth, which represents shelter or protection, right? So, so we can see how this, this symbol is used. Now, in Joshua, we know, again, that this is going to, um, where's this here? Um, I thought it was in Joshua, but maybe somewhere else. Now, you were saying uh, regarding Sukkoth, what were you saying, Stephen, about it? It was... What was the purpose of the city? A city of refuge. Yeah, so a city of refuge. And that's why I was trying to find it here. Uh, yeah, this must be here in Joshua. Uh, this is not talking about the cities of refuge, though. So... But I believed it was a city of refuge. So where would we find that? Uh, maybe. Do you have a verse for that? Um, yeah, I'm looking myself. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, maybe I'm getting them mixed up. I check them. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, you could be right. Okay, but it is a place of protection. It would be good if it was a city of refuge that would fit in with that. Um, but yeah, the word saka means a hut or lair, booth, cottage, covert, a pavilion, tabernacle, tent. So Sukkoth is just the feminine plural. Of okay, but anyway, so yeah, so it's it's not the city of refuge, but I was going to try to find. Yeah, losing God's protection when we venture on Satan's ground when we're in disobedience. Ellen White writes about this. To God and. Day dallying with the devil and entertaining his fallacies would forget for forfeit God's blessing. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to see if I can find here. 
So in Hastings Bible Dictionary, it might give us some. Uh, first mentioned in Genesis 33, 17. Um, mentioned in Judges, the passage we're looking at. Yeah, so I don't think it's one of the cities of refuge. Okay, so it's part of the Jordan Valley through which the Jabbok flows into the Jordan, which is very fertile. Okay. Okay, so anyway, we have it when they flee uh, Egypt that they first go to Succoth. <clears throat> okay, so in Judges here, where we have these, uh, they, they go to the men of Sukkot, so they go forward to the place of the booths, and they're not going to receive bread, right? Now, um, and it says here that um, the princes of Sukkot and the elders thereof, even three score and 17 men. So we have 77 men in, that, are, that are the elders. And he came unto the men of Sukkoth and said, Behold, Ziba and Zalmunna, with whom he did upbraid me, saying, Are, ha are the hands of Ziba and Zalmunna now in thine hand? Um, and Angela notes that 1909, nine times nine is 81. Um, and he took the elders of the city and the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sukkoth and beat down the tower of Penuel. So just dealing with Sukkoth, we have these 77 men. So what would be the significance of the 77 men after he captures Ziba and Zalmunna and he goes back to Sukkoth and they have 77 elders there? What, what is that indicating? Were you thinking of connecting it to the 777 days? Yeah. So we connected to the 777 days, which we know ends on December 25th, 2021, right? Um, but now we also have uh, a symbol. Like I'm saying that Sukkoth represents the Canadian group and Penuel represents the American group. Now, what, why would I say that? Anybody the American group is not so much connected to chronology. Right, the Canadian group is more connected to chronology, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so we have the Canadian group connected to this chronology and um, now Penuel, that, that represents the face of God. So why would I connect that with the American group and also the watchtower that's going to be thrown down? Any ideas on that?
Anybody got ideas on what Penuel would mean? What does the face of God mean? So if we go, um, if we, okay, the face of God, what is that? Where do we have this presented? The new one. Well, it's the story of Jacob. He wrestles with Christ. Okay, right. So we have the time of Jacob's trouble, right? So we have this wrestling that goes on, right? So he's going to name the place uh, Peniel. Well, here they have a Peniel, different spelling, but it's the same place, which means the face of God, right? And now if we are going to try to attach this to the American group, why would I do that? What is it? What is it that we're seeing here? Because this message is going to go to the men of Penuel, asking, just as they did with the men of Sukkoth, uh, for support. Right? When he goes in 8 8 up to the men of Penuel, spake unto them likewise, the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth had answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. So, what are the symbols here? So, one is we can see 8 8. So that's, that's the number eight, priests and Levites, <coughs> Second Chronicles 29. And here he's going to tear down their tower, right? That's Migdal tower could mean a castle flower pulpit tower because these are supposed to be representing something but they're not would we say that and in the american group we have way more elders correct people have been in this movement for a long time than in the Canadian group. We have Daniel Fontenot, we have Steve Welk, we have Bud, right? And lots of others. So why, why does the American group not support the light that's coming from July 18, 2020? They're the watchmen. Right? Well, Daniel did do, uh, Daniel Fontero did do a presentation, a series supporting July 18. Yeah, he did. So, so we know that he supported July 18th. He was strongly supporting it at first. And, and he still is, as far as I know. But what is he not supporting? about July 18th.
because I think further uh, further discussing it. Okay, so so he supports July eighteenth. He he places it at October twenty second, eighteen forty four. But he's not looking at anything that's being said about it by anyone else. Right. That is, when we looked at July 18th, we understood that it lined up with July 18th, 1844, and only typifies October 22nd, 1844. Now, when we place it at October 22nd, directly, without that understanding, uh, we're not understanding the typical nature of our line. Now, now Daniel Fontenot, more than any other person that I know of, is has been presenting, um, and correctly, uh, the role of the Catholic Church, uh, the the role of the United States, the abomination of desolation, all this stuff dealing with uh, very standard Adventist views. Right, there's nothing wrong with that. But we have light that has come to this movement. Were they supporting the light that was coming to this movement? As watchmen upon the walls of Zion, as people in the watchtower, as people that represent the face of God, that have seen the face of God, they're not supporting anything else that's happening. And we don't know the reason for that. We don't know why. I don't understand Daniel Fontenot's reaction to me, uh, particularly, and I think it was in a meeting on October 2nd, if I remember correctly. Anybody, anybody remember the date? Uh, this is the date with um, the study that we had with uh, Mark Johnson. Right. So in that study, we were bringing up, and I'm pretty sure it's October 2nd. Um, we'll do it this way here. So we're going to have, because um, I'm presenting on the book of Hebrews on the Sabbaths, um, every second Sabbath. And I'm going to present uh, on October 2nd, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, October 2nd, uh, Chapter 8. And it's going to be that morning in the study uh, that we end up with this conflict that occurred. What year? 2021, right? So this is back then. So we're, we're working our way up to December 25th. So in, the, in that study, um, and I could probably bring it up, um, I have it somewhere, but um, I'd have to find it. But basically what ends up happening is at the beginning of the study, we were talking about... Um, I know Daniel Fontenot reacted to me in some way that I was kind of caught off guard uh, because he was implying that I wasn't supporting um, the idea of the Catholic Church being the Antichrist or something like that. It, it, I didn't even understand what he was reacting to. So I knew there was something going on that he was he was reacting to me personally. It had nothing really to do with what I was saying. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what the point in particular was. Um, it, it, he, may, he thought I was saying something because um, I was saying something about, about the Catholic Church and, and he reacted. I was quite surprised anyway. And then we got into um, the issue of the vaccine and mark johnson was trying to say that when you take the vaccine it changes your dna and you're no longer human and and then i i challenged that i said well you know that's not possible and then he said a bunch of things that had no relationship to anything about human dna changing 
It was just all these bad things about the vaccine, some of which were true. Uh, but I said, you know, that's nonsense, right? In the sense that what he was saying didn't, it was, it was gobbledygook as far as anything that I was saying. And then of course there was the reaction to that. And then, um, and then I know Colin brought up about uh, the Supreme Court decision where he says that human DNA can be patented. And, uh, you know, he had a mix up about the date in which that was. Uh, but the decision of the Supreme Court was that you cannot patent human DNA. So this idea that if we get the vaccine, then we are owned by the drug companies, which of course would be ridiculous. Anyway, you can't own a human being. Um, so, so anyway, that was on October 2nd, 2021. So, so, that's, so that would be the men of Penuel. Or would it be, um, you know, it is, wh where does this really begin, I guess, is the question. So we have the October 2nd. What I'm looking at is these meetings where um, these conflicts occurred. So we have that one over, and we have December 25th, 2021, where we have the other conflict dealing with the Trump. So those are going to be the two meetings in which conflicts occur. And, and I'm gonna argue that these two meetings um, represent uh, this withdrawal of support or this not supporting July 18th, that that's where it's going to begin. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The, the support, um... The retract of support for July 18th at that point. Okay. So uh, now I put these, uh, now that number 77, if you go, um, so what's going to happen is um, we're going to have that on July, uh, July 2nd. And then on, or not July 2nd. October 2nd. And October 9th, the next Saturday, I'm going to write, because um, I start a series of, of emails with uh, Daniel Fontenot. So I write one on October 3rd, the next day. Um, and then on the Monday, he responds. And then on October 4th, uh, I respond. And October 9th, him and I have our last email exchange. Okay, so so I'm marking October 9th, and from October 9th to December 25th is how many days? For you chronologists out there. Seventy-seven, right? So, is that significant? Can I take this uh, seventy-seven days from the last communication I have with Daniel Fontenot, Re and and that's going to represent that seventy-seven that goes uh, to Succoth, right? Now, this is sort of in reverse because we're going to have the American group uh, first, and then what happens with the Canadian group second, but we have the symbol of 77 days. So it ties these two together. Now, a person could argue it's 84 days because we would start with October 2nd, but I'm gonna mark the last communication that I have with Daniel Fontenot. Does that seem reasonable? So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take judges eight, whatever it is, eight, um, try to look at the verses. Um, so I'm gonna take eight, eight as, um, that's gonna be uh, Penuel.
Um, so I'm just going to put that underneath here. Why is your screen sharing paused? Um, because it is. I'm going to show you this because I'm working on another screen and it oh. almost does that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to take this and put it under here. And I'll just put this as Camille. And that's going to be uh, October 9, 2021. Okay, so whether that's correct or not, that's what I'm doing here. Just as a, a tentative line. Now that means I'm going to have to take um, what happens with, um, uh, and I'm going to use judges eight six. So I'm going to get. So it's going backwards. And that's going to be December 25th, 2021. Okay, does that make sense to people or not? So you can see this isn't lining up with the December 25th or December 26th that we see here. This is just lining up. This is going to be Sukkoth. They're inverted. And we're going to have this period of 77 days. Anybody with thoughts on this? You guys are pretty quiet. I know you're probably thinking about it. Does it make sense that I put Penuel before Sukkoth, even though in Judges it comes the other way around? Now, for me, you know, personally, this is where I see the division happening. At least it's noted by me, whether it's occurring before, that would be obvious. But I'm marking the end of my communication with uh, Daniel Fontenot. So I'm not marking October 2nd, though we could add that week in there, right? So we, we could even put that as a waymark as well. Um, so we'd have to think about that October 2nd to October 9th being one week and then the 77 days or 11 weeks going to December 25th, 2021. And then we would have to decide um, how we're going to take this, these lines here. So. I don't know if I'd line it up. Maybe let's just go back here. So we're going to have something happen here, some date, some event internally. Okay. 
Anybody know what that is? February 16th, 2022. Why would I mark that? Yeah, that's when, uh, was it Colin? Took yeah. His, took the, uh, the website, was it? The uh, Zoom connection? Mm-hmm. The angels, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, and it's not really Colin per se. I mean, it is uh, his wife. But um, yeah, so she doesn't include the details for my Zoom connection on February 16th when they publish their email uh, announcing the upcoming meetings. So on February 16th, we have this occurring. Now, um, now this, of course, this is not on a Sabbath. I think this is a Thursday or something like that. Um, So, but that's that's an event to me that is significant as far as the December twenty fifth date, and maybe that's maybe that's the date we put there. But I just put it there tentatively, and um, February sixteenth of which year? Twenty twenty two, this year. What verse and judges? Well, that's the question that we still haven't decided on. It was a Wednesday. Yeah, okay, it's a Wednesday, yeah. And So that's going to be 53 days after December 25th. I don't know if that means anything. And I'm not sure if that's the right way, Mark, or not. Um, and then we would, and we'll, we'll deal with the, the chapters themselves there. Um, and then we're going to have uh, another way, Mark. So, and this is going to be Judges 8 something, whatever that is going to be. And this is going to be Judges 8 something. So we don't know what that date is yet. And this is going to be Judges. And we don't know what this date is yet, where this is going to end. So if we if we look at these verses now, so we we have eight eight that's going to be Penuel, eight six that's the rejection the men of Sukkoth have, right? So the men of Sukkoth speak here on eight six, and eight six of course is a symbol of the message of July eighteenth because of the August sixth symbolism, which uh, ties into lots of different places. Now. So in 8 verse 10, now Zeb and Zamuna were in Karkor and their hosts, hosts with them about 15,000 men, all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east, for there fell on 120,000 men that drew sword. So that means they would have had 135,000, 120,000 have already fallen. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents, on the east of Noba and Jogbaha and smote the host of the, and the, for the host was secure. What that means is they were in, in a place of refuge, right? And we have these names, Noba, which means a bark. And in that sense, um, Travis Briggs, I get a look at that. He 
deep group here. And um, so we have Noba barking. And then Jogbaha, which means lofty. Okay. Now, <laughs> when we when I think of barking, I think of dumb dogs that will not bark. Um, but I don't know if that has anything to do with this. But you have barking and lofty. And so this is where they're going to come. They're going to come to Karkor, uh, which means foundation. So Zeb and Zamuna were in Karkor. So they're in this place called Foundation, and their hosts were with them, about 15,000 men, all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the East, right? And we have this um, 120,000 men. What does that symbolize? We... Uh... I think when we covered this the last time, we, we connected it to the 120 days. Okay. The first, day the first month, the first day of the fifth month. Right. So we're connecting it to um, uh, to the 120 days. It has a symbol, of course, dealing with Pentecost as well, right? Um, but it's it's the message from the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month as a symbol, even though it's 118 days, it still has a symbol 120 days. And so we have all of these different symbols, Ziba being barking, Zamuna meaning, or not Ziba being barking, uh, sacrifice Zamuna shade, Karkar being a foundation. And then you're gonna have these places, Noba and Jogbada, Jogbaha that are going to be, um, and Jagbaha means lofty. It also can mean like a hilly area as well, right? A hillock. So it's just a place that's lifted up. And so these symbols, um, and Gideon's going to go up by the way of them that dwell in tents, Right, and we've looked at this word tent before, 168, which is a symbol of the week, because 168 hours in a week. So we have all of these symbols. What are they describing? Because Zeb and Zomuna are in a place that is called the foundation. We have a symbol of Pentecost. We have a symbol from the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month. We have a symbol of um, tense, which is a symbol of the week. So what's happening here? What? How are we going to look at Ziba and Zalmuna? To me, it's... Uh... Kind of connects to Millerite history and, and the uh, time prophecies. Okay. So this is, in order to pursue Ziba and Zamuna, we need to go to the foundation. We need to be looking at, at the chronology, at the time prophecies. Right? It, would, would that make sense? Well, there's, that would seem to connect. Okay. And then we have, now Ziba and Zamuna fled, and, and he pursued after them and took the two kings of Midian, Ziba and Zamuna, and discomfited all the host. And Gideon, the son of Josh, returned from the battle before the sun was up. So what is the, the sun coming up? What would this mean that he returns from the battle before the sun was up? Uh, the battle took place at midnight, maybe. Okay, so it's taking place at night, right? And um, and then he 
And when he gets, he returns, right, from the battle, he's going to go to the men of Sukkoth and, and inquires of them. You know, he, there's this inquiry. And he describes unto him the princes. So he caught a young man of Sukkoth and inquired of him. And he described the princes of Sukkoth, the elders thereof, and the three score seven and 17 men. So the 77 men. So, so Gideon is asking this young man, this youth, um, about the men of Sukkoth. So what is he doing? What is this inquiry? And why does he need these men described to him? Any any thoughts on what's what he's doing? You know, and Angela had written just earlier um, this parallel between rejecting Ellen G. White's, E.J. Wagner's, and A.T. Jones' righteousness by faith messages and a refusal to accept Palmo and I chronology today. So um, I think that's what she's saying about Ziva and Zalmuna, if I'm not mistaken. But he's going to inquire of this, a, a young man of the men of Sukkoth, so a citizen of Sukkoth, inquires of him, and this young man's going to describe to him the princes of Sukkoth, the elders thereof, even three score and 17 men. So, so this is the message of July 18th, asking a question of a young man of Sukkoth. And he's going to give him an answer of, of describing the princes of Sukkoth and that they are 77 men. So what's what's happening here? What's the inquiry as a symbol? Or inquiry. Where do, where do we place an inquiry? Would it be 9-11? Okay, why would you place an inquiry at 9-11? You have a reason? I didn't quite hear you, um, Theodore. 
So what's your reason for placing it at 9-11? Okay. Yeah. Why? So when we look at the Bible and we're going to look at an inquiry, Oh, I'm thinking of when the high priest uh, thugs went to take Christ. They asked him who he was. So there's an inquiry there, a major one. Okay. And that was supposed to, supposed to be at midnight. Yeah. So, so we would place it normally at midnight. I don't know if we would place it at 9-11. Ah. Uh. Okay. Okay, so an example would be um, Let me see here. Let's try and find this here. So let's go here. Because um, we have so many different uh, So many different verses that we could look at. Um, uh, let me see. Because we have lots of different questions in Genesis. Um, you know, the one verse I think of. Um, So we had studied this before, uh, dealing with um, when somebody is in apostasy, right? There's a, because we studied this when we were looking at um, the end of Judges there. So in Judges 13, 13, it says, certain men of the children of Belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city saying, let us go and serve other gods. Right? And this is saying, if this happens which ye have not known, then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently and behold, if it be truth and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. You're um, not sharing? Yeah, I know. I just realized that. So if we look here, this is uh, Deuteronomy 13 and 14. So you're going to see there. Um, so we have this word inquire. And, and this here, this type of inquiry uh, needs to be done. So what is, what is God asking us to do in this, in this idea of inquiring? What is it implying? I mean, the first, uh, we have it as the word uh, seek in Deuteronomy 4, verse 29. If from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. 
So that's quoted other places in the Bible. As the word inquire, it first shows up in Genesis 25, 22. The children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. It's also used, translated as sought. Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eliezer and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, uh, which were left alive saying, right? Um, it also can be translated as require. Um, like I will require at the hand of every beast, I will require it, the blood, your blood, right? So God's asking it. Um, Proverbs 11, 27, he that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Uh, the word inquisition searches lots of different ways in which this word is translated. Um, but if we're going to deal with this inquiry, is this searching and examining God's word? Is it looking for truth? Would this imply study, this type of inquiry? Seems like that would be the case. Okay. So, so if we just go to Judges, so we'll deal with, uh, you know, where we place this way mark here. Um, but if we go to Judges 8, and we have this inquiry that's going on, he caught a young man of the men of Sukkoth and inquired of him. And when he inquires of him, he's produced with an understanding of this 77 symbol. Right? So... If we're going to look at this, this would be some kind of study or inquiry into Bible prophecy. That that's how Ziba and Zalmunna are defeated, right? It's going to be connected with their defeat. Now, another thing about this is three score is, is three groups of 20, right? So it's not given yeah. as the number 77, it's, it's given as the number three score and 17. So we have a 20 there, three of them, but... And then 20 times 20 times 20 is, well, 20, 20 times 20 is 400. I mean, if we're going to multiply it, but we, get, we would get the symbol of eight, and you four times eight, or four times two is eight. So you get 817, which can symbolize July 18th. My point is that that I yeah so it can deal with examination of sin which which we would get from the examination of prophecy so I know our time is up almost and we're going to come back to this tomorrow but where I'm going to start to place this is this examination that happens with Colin's message on December 25th and also the examination of Odilio's message. So that's where I'm going to put this, um, these way marks. So we have, we have two different messages that need to be um, examined. And, and these deal with this Ziba and Zalmuna as well. Um, and then the judgments are going to come upon Ziba and Zalmuna. So we're going to, and, you know, this is very tentative, right? This is just me thinking without a great deal of input from everyone else. But I want people to think this through. I mean, this could be completely wrong how I've placed this as far as uh, the dates that we would mark. But I'm seeing this as all about the December 25th waymark, a zoom into that. And, and the December 25th waymark shows this these tests that are given 
And in a sense, I can look at Ziba and Zalmuna more as tests than anything, not so much errors. And, and the way that I looked at it before is that we could see in, in other places too, we have these two different messages, one dealing with uh, the Trump prediction and another one dealing with uh, the vaccine and the mandates. And so, so to me, this is, is something that comes from this, but how to lay this out, I, I haven't fully decided. There might be pieces that we're missing. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? I know it's been a bit slow study. I think it's off to a good start, though. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, I wish we could go through this much more quickly, but um, yeah, at least we got a bit more done here. Okay. So uh, let's close with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Your Father in heaven, we are grateful for all that you do and for the time that we have spent here this morning. We pray that it can be profitable, and that we can see in ourselves our need of you, and that we can see the time in which we are living in this movement. We know that Colin's prediction regarding the sweep of the American election by the Republicans has not come to pass, but we're not sure how um, others are going to respond. And so we just ask Lord that you can give us wisdom in how to address any of these things and any of the contact that we have with others. We know Lord that um, we all lack in understanding and we seek you each day. Be with us until we come to meet together again is our prayer, and we pray for each person and those that um, may be struggling in various ways. We ask for your angels' care and protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone.